Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. We're talking about the dreaded big pharma with Anthony Brookweir. Uh, yes. Are you on the uh, pharmacy board by any chance, or have you I been? did. I served on the Alabama State Board of Pharmacy. Oh, good. I've been out there a few times. Okay. Mr. Ward's a good friend of mine. And he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Yes. I, he doesn't know I'm having this show he, today. I'll have to tell him because he probably would want to know why he wasn't here with us. I okay. would think he would yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, so all of these dollars are moving uh, in ginormous amounts, if that's a word. That's a good word. <clears throat> I think it would be ginormous and not ginormous, but yes. <laughs> in yes. large amounts. Large amounts. And the money's moving to the pharmaceutical companies. You have told us that the FTC is not exercising the discretion it has to make that not happen. Uh, and I bet if we looked at contributions, we'd see some House and Senate contributions on a federal level coming directly from Big Pharma. But talk about the money flow just a bit with us. And, and why we can't do something well, of course, about it. Of course, the money goes right in the pockets of the manufacturers. Um, they control the, the, the product, and uh, they've got a monopoly. And How many manufacturers do we have? Hundreds and thousands or? Hundreds. Hundreds. Hundreds, yes, okay. hundreds. And um, another thing, I, I, and I'm interrupting you just a touch, and I want you to be the one talking, not me, but other countries don't have these issues, I don't believe. No, they don't. Okay. No, they don't. You can talk about that yes. as well. Um, well, FDA, and, and it appears, actually appears to me, uh, my personal thoughts are that Congress does not have the authority that they once had. The authority, the, the, what, 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 what a, a affects our lives more than anything are bureaus such as the... Uh, FTC and, and FDA and so forth. Um, FDA, uh, uh, it's a consensus among pharmacists that FDA is controlled by big pharmaceutical companies and the manufacturers, uh, the generic manufacturers. Now whether the heavy lobby is with the uh, executive branch of the government who uh, controls the bureaus or what, obviously the um, Congress doesn't. Congress didn't have the authority. When uh, one of the PBMs wanted to, uh, one of the um, chain drug stores wanted to buy a PBM, pharmace PBM. pharmaceutical benefits manager, uh, uh, our company, uh, APCI, filed a lawsuit. Nineteen senators wrote in favor of us to deny that merger, but FTC did it anyway. And there was a connection between well, well, between friends of the of the uh, of the president and so forth that that brought all this about. So you see, uh, my contention is that the bureaus have the have the um, are carrying the weight instead of Congress. That's my opinion. Well, how do we fight that? Well, talk about we, it. Talk about it and bring it before the public and let them know what's going on. Uh, let's talk about FDA, uh, yeah. Food and Drug Administration. Uh, I already pointed out the fact that pharmacies cannot duplicate anything, even though it's off patent. I'm talking about duplicating a generic because it takes away from pharmaceutical companies. Now, suppose you were taking a medication uh, by mouth and you could no longer swallow a tablet for some medical reason. You had to have a liquid. Mm -hmm. Now, I have at my disposal, sterile powders to replace that tablet, and then I can make you a liquid to take. Or a dissolvable something. Exactly. However, FDA doesn't allow us to do that. We have to take the manufactured product that you were taking and grind it up and go from there. So you don't have to be real smart to figure out who, who told, who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who told FDA to make us use their tablet? So they don't lose that sale of that one prescription they're worried about. And so we have to use that. And the well, funny thing about that is they uh, are 
FDA is disobeying one of their own precepts of many of the 1980s in which they were concerned about misbranding. Misbranding means you're not sure what, what all is in there. Well, when I grind up their tablets, I, all I know is what the active ingredient is. I don't know what else is in there. What the binders are. What the binders are, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, there's enormous proof that FDA is controlled. Well, who polices FDA? Who polices FTC? No president? Nobody? Well, really, actually, Congress should. In, in the should. Way I, it should. In the, way our, in the way our country was set up, the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative, legislative branch. Yeah. So they're supposed to be separate exactly, but equal. Exactly. There's and, some <clears throat> blending on occasion. Exactly, exactly. And uh, it's, um, it's a shame. They're, they're making, uh, uh, and you would be familiar with this term, they're making uh, uh, administrative law, but you can't make administrative law if you don't have legislative law to back it up. To support it. To support it. And we're getting... It's almost like the tax code, I guess. <laughs> we're getting inundated with uh, regulations from these so-called bureaus, and I believe they don't have the legislative authority to do that, but they're doing it. Even the executive branch, the president is passing laws, and he's not, he's not, according to the Constitution, he's not allowed to do that. But the things that affect our lives and, and, and the public's life are the mandates that come from these bureaus. Hold that thought. I want to talk about Medicaid and some, uh, right. some Medicare questions as well when we come back. Now that I've reached the ripe age of Medicare eligibility. This is Our Issues Birmingham. I'm Tommy Spina. We'll be right back.